Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about the introduction to Whirlpool ciphertext technique. So, this technique is used to generate the message digest. Means, take the original message. For that, we have to generate the message digest. Hoping that you already know these basics. In our previous classes, we already discussed about one of the cryptography hash function technique that is going to generate the message digest. That is SHA-512. This is our second technique which we are going to use to generate the message digest. So, what's the difference between the previous one, SHA-512 and Whirlpool is this is going to use the cryptography encryption models. To generate the message digest and it is going to use the iterative method what's that iterative method means the original message suppose if your original message is of length some x the, it is it is going to be divided into blocks of size 512 this 512 bit is given as input to the Whirlpool ciphertext encryption. Some function it is going to be executed, some, some logic it is going to execute here. And it is going to generate a 512 bit output. So along with this plain text, 512 bit plain text, it is going to take input as 512 bit key. So, for the initial round, the key is considered as all zeros, 512 bit key, we call it as H0. Initial, for the first round, it is going to be all zeros. During the implementation, you can do, you can allot some constant also, but you can take all zeros also. So, the Whirlpool ciphertext encryption, it is going to take 512 bit input Along with that, it is going to take 512 bit key and it is going to generate a 512 bit output. Whatever the 512 bit output you got here, so this output is going to be XORed with the plain text and it is going to be XORed with the key and it is going to generate an output. Whatever the final output after XOR operation with the plain text and the key that is given as the key for the next round. For the next round, key is generated and the next 512 bit plain text is taken as input and it is going to generate the next output. This is how it goes. That's why it is called as iterative method. In the last round, the final 512 bits and the output which we got here, this we call it as 512 bit output which we got from the last round we call it as a message digest. So now let's try to understand how this input is divided into blocks of size 512. The input original message, it is going to be added with padding bits in order to cover it into a multiples of, see this length should be a multiples of odd multiples of 256. So why they considered odd multiples of 256 after padding bits, it should be odd multiples of 256 bits. For this, it is going to, they are going to add message length, means in order to identify the original message after adding the padding bits, in order to identify the original message, they are going to add the length of the message. For that, they are allocating 256 bits, means in Whirlpool ciphertext, it is going to allow the original message length, maximum message length should be 2 power 256. It is going to accept a maximum original message length of 2 power 256. So finally, after adding the message length, it is going to be an even length multiples of even length 256 bits. So, 2, 256 bits, you can combine it as 512 bits. So, this entire message, it is going to be divided into 512, 512, 512 like this. So, once these 512 bits are given as input to the Whirlpool cipher block, what happens inside this block? We are going to understand that we are, it is exactly very much similar with light modification 
of AES advanced encryption standard. So what happens inside this? Let's get an overview of that. In our next class, we are going to continue with the what happens inside each round. Hoping that you already know what AES, that's why we are going to explain it very little bit fast. The key which is going to be generated, 512 bit key, the initial values are all zeros. It is going to take as key for the next round. It is going to key, take it key for the next round like that it is going to do. In the first round, by taking the key, so what happens inside this Whirlpool ciphertext is it is going to use 10 rounds. The 512 bit key, the key expansion algorithm is going to generate next 10 keys using the initial key. The first key taken as K0 and the next keys are generated by using this key expansion algorithm. How it is going to be generated will be discussed in our next next classes and it is going to use as a nine, 10, total 10 rounds and one pre-round transformation. In AES, what happens inside the pre-round transformation? The original key, the key not, the first key is going to be XORed with the actual plain text. The 512 bit plain text is going to be done with the XOR operation with the key. The same thing happens here. And the output which we got here is given as input to the round 1. For round 1, we are going to use K1 as the key. How this K1 is generated, we are going to discuss in our coming coming class. The output which we got from round 1 is given as input to the round 2. Like that, it is going to use 10 rounds. And the final output which we got here, 512 bit output, we call it as a, the output which we got here. This is how it is going to be do the encryption for the message. So what happens inside this each round, round one? That we are going to discuss in our next class. Hope you understand, you got a good idea about the introduction to the Whirlpool ciphertext encryption standard. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.